hi guys welcome i'm farmer jay and in this video i'm going to be sharing with you a story of a modern nigerian farmer today he's going to be telling us the story behind his success right up to this one beside me is mr debo onofora the ceo of bic farm it's a pleasure to meet you sir thank you farmer ajayi yes sir so how did it all start it you know the farming okay um i think i started full-time farming in 2003 but um, I started quantity surveying. I graduated December 2002. You know, I was privileged to get a job immediately, but I didn't enjoy the job. So after one month, I resigned. And my father asked, So, what do you want to do with your life? And <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so he said, Okay, will you try farming? And I said, Yes. And that was how I started with fish farming, breeding specifically. And it has been from there to level from one level to the other i started like, working like with how many years uh, you started uh, i actually started full time 2003 and then by 2006 i registered bic farms okay. yeah so i think i've started bic farms about 17 years ago now that's a full-time farming job yeah. you know but uh i learned farming while growing up i was trained by my father you know backyard farming we had piggly uh, poultry rabbit tree we were growing uh, guinea fowl. My father used to breed white rat for white different rat. universities. Oh. Yes, those oh. days. They were growing vegetables, specifically a foil book, that from time to time, if every weekend, we package, take to the university compound to sell and all that. So, I've come a long way. <laughs> so, yeah. to, to a layman who doesn't know the meaning of hydroponics, can okay. you please explain what hydroponics is? Um, okay, hydroponics is coined from a Greek word. It's a combination of two words. Hydro means water and ponix means walk. Professor Gerku of the University of California in 1953 now coined the word. So we have hydroponics. So hydroponics simply means water works. If you know the one of the ancient um, wonders of the world called this hanging garden of Babylon, you know. So that's the work of hydroponics. hydroponics. Um, when you see water hyacinth on water, that's hydroponics. So hydroponics is basically using water to work. Now we have two classifications of hydroponics. We have pure hydroponics where you only use water and then uh, liquid mineral nutrients to grow. And then we have what we call soilless culture. In soilless culture, we are not using soil. We use something called substrate. Substrate is a sort of support that you give to plant. Let me quickly say this. Crops or plant does not need soil. They need wow. anchor. What the soil does, it only acts as an anchor against erosion and it acts as a house for food, for okay. plants. Yeah. So you can substitute that because the same soil has diseases and yeah. so many things. Yeah. So growing without it is called the soilless culture system. And that's what I mean. So, sir, you said it's soilless farming. Yeah. So, what is the substitute you're using for soil? Okay, you remember, I, you remember I told you about yeah. pure hydroponics that yeah. uses water and then soilless culture. Like where we are now is a soilless culture. If, if you look at it. Okay, yeah. No, no sound. Now, this is called BIC Grow Mix. Wow. This particular mix, okay. we produced it okay. from rice husk. Wow. Rice husk is the waste of rice. Waste of rice, yeah. Uh, we pyrolyze the rice husk, called carbonizing, okay. to form biochar. Uh, we compost parts, we inoculated it with uh, beneficial microorganisms, wow. beneficial fungi, and some other things, and then it became this. Yeah, so it, it has a little of our secret there, too. Okay, okay. So, so this, you want to this, know is, our, this is our planting company. material, it's for sale. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we, we have two types, which they can buy the concentrated one that they can go and mix themselves okay, and okay. then we have the ones we have mixed but that's so, what we normally use what, so what's planted these are, are this, these, ones these, these are bell peppers um, okay yes these are bell peppers it's they've harvested them over and over they're almost terminating them bell peppers some people call them sweet uh, pepper or you call it capsicum that's the other name for it okay i think um this Okay, so you can see. So wow. these are bell peppers, wow. basically.
I was about to ask, I was about to ask that what caused the history, but you. I, <laughs> I told you, caused this story. Okay. Yeah. Now you. <laughs> but I learned farming from home, mm. and um, let me say I've gone for a number of trainings. I've attended hydroponics academy in South Africa, wow. Cape Town. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's um, I have been to the Sangai Center. Uh, so many courses online from a lot of uh, agricultural institutes and all that. Yeah, and um, just around that, yeah. So, why do you think a lot of you don't want to go into agriculture? Um, this is something I've answered a lot of times. I will say it's simply because of the perception. It's a perception problem. We want to be fresh. We want to look like farmers. Leave us alone. Sars, go away. You see, we, agriculture was presented to us as a punitive uh, vocation. In secondary schools, even primary school, when, when you offend or you do anything wrong what would they do they give you cutlass and hose go and cut the mm. shit right you know they were using agriculture to punish us so that has gone into our subconscious and when you see a farmer you see him doing a punitive vocation mm. you understand so no young person wants to do that kind of a job secondly it's not been attractive you see female farmers of those days wearing wrapper on their chest torn dirty wrapper men wearing torn tattered clothes mm. you know which young person will want to to look like that? And considering the fact that where we come from, Africa, the largest arable land in the world is from this part of the world. Africa okay. should be the food basket of the world. But you don't make agriculture look attractive. Hmm. So who, who will want to be a farmer, you know? So uh, that has been the major reason. It's a problem of perception. And that's the reason why a lot of young people have not been into agriculture. Yeah. So what do you think can be done to encourage more youths to go into agriculture? Uh, I still think all we need to do is to also change their perception, you know. They need to see farming, one, as a viable vocation. Uh, when I was in training in South Africa, I was privileged to attend a program and about seven farmers flew their private jets there. <laughs> Actually, that changed my thinking. It changed the way I saw agriculture. I was like, what? Yes, they flew by themselves. They owned the plane and they flew it there. So I, I, I want to do that. I want to do yeah. that. Actually, you know? <laughs> that was and I was like, wow. So, you know, if you can't have such a picture of farming and one, our young people will not want to do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so true. we really need to change the perception. perception. We need to show our young people that farming is gainful. You know, farming is productive. Uh, if we can do that, then... A lot of young people will come in. Okay. Recently, you are seeing a lot of young involvement in farming because we are now showing that farming is possible. You don't have to be dirty. It's, you can have a white collar farm, a job in your, in your farm, you know. You can farm in the city just like where we are now, you know. And you, you can get better results, make more money doing the same thing and do what farmers have not been doing. Yes. Farmers in this part of the world see agriculture as subsistence farming they just grow food oh, and farming. farming is a business it goes beyond just growing food you may not be a um, food or vegetable cultivator but you can be a transporter yeah. you know yeah. value chain preservative and so many things let me say this crop cultivation only covers five percent of the value chain in farming yes shop right makes money from farming by a lot of people because they are in the retail end of farming mm -hmm. and that's controls about 43 percent you understand walmart all those big retail you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah, so yeah, sure. we need to show young people that farming is beyond just growing the food in itself it, it's a whole business on its own and when we do that we'll be shocked that a lot of young people will be interested so what really inspired you to, you know to start your own farm was it that was it just an option like you said your dad told you what you were, were interested in farming was it just that or there's something else i you know that inspired you to start your own farm? uh at the beginning to be sincere i just wanted to do something i didn't want a five to eight hmm. so my father asked are you interested in farming i said let's test it but i found my calling in farming it was when I found my calling that everything changed. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, currently, I'm changing the food production systems in Africa. The problem we have with farming is in the production system. We wait for rainfall mm, before yeah, we go to yes. produce. 
Yet yeah. crops does not need to rain. They need water. water. You can give through irrigation. Yeah. You know, we wait for sunlight. Crop does not need the sun. It's light, and talks about the wavelength and color of light. You know, you can do that in your basement. You can do that in your spare room. You can do that in the greenhouse. You can reduce certain things that gives better results. You understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? So I found a calling uh, in farming. It didn't start like that. I found later found my calling, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Uh, I'm an advocate for farming, especially by young people. I see farming as a way to bring a major change to Africa. Yeah. Africa should feed the world. That's what God created us for. Yes, world. Africa should feed the world. And uh, like my friend always say, Hunger is not seasonal. Why should food production be seasonal? No so way. we now show farming yes. in a way that you can grow food all year round. You you understand? So that's why, that's where I found my motivation from, okay. and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So when you about that, what was the you know the start of in terms of capital financing? Initially, so people think you know for you to go into agriculture, probably you, you need, need a lot, lot of money. money. Yeah, you you don't need a lot of money. You need social capital. You see, what a lot of people lack nowadays is capital. And capital is not just money. Social capital. Network. Meet, meet your... You, you get what I'm saying? Uh, when I was starting, I was uh, privileged to meet a mentor who, who trained me. I, on the, I went through an apprenticeship for two months. And that transformed everything. Now, I, I saw a technology called the circulating aquaculture system. I could remember those days, I needed about 500,000 to build the smaller system, and I didn't have the money. But I caught an idea. I localized it. I, okay. I built a local variation of that, oh, yeah, and yeah. it changed everything. Oh. But my social capital helped better. In what way? The same person that trained me, even though he didn't pay me a salary, yeah. started buying the from, produce from, from me. me. Yeah. In fact, it gave me like a constant order for almost two years. Wow. Where it was always the book, so the book. Okay, I need 50,000 fingerlings from you. You understand what I'm trying wow. to say? So you can imagine. That gave me confidence. I was happy that, wow, this person is buying. And it, it, it really changed things. So okay. mentoring is key, social capital is key. If you have those things, they will bring the money that you are looking for. Yeah. Because I didn't have the market, he had the market. And he banked on me, you mm. understand? Mm. And then friends and all that, and that transformed it. A lot of our young people are burning their social capital. They are burning bridges. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And these are things that you need to go far in life. Mm. There are people you need to know that they will just help you. It might be a simple contact. Oh, this thing you are doing, I know somebody there who can take mm. it. And that's it. And before you know it. So that's, that's what I think. Yeah, capital is not just money. It, it comes in so many things. It's so many things. And you'll be shocked. So what problem do you think farmers are facing in the idea that I do this can help solve? Okay. Uh, let me say, okay, number one, security. You see, prior to now, farmers are comfortable going far into the bush yeah. to go and grow and all that. But because of the insecurity problem that we've been having, uh, farmers' headers clashes, yeah. kidnapping and all that. So people need, where they can still grow food, because you cannot suspend growing food, just like I said. Uh, hunger is not seasonal, food production cannot be, you know. You still have to grow food. So we need where we can grow food using minimal space and still be able to maximize our output. With hydroponics, one hectare of hydroponics will give you the result of 50 hectares of open field. So you can imagine that. And that means, one, you are saving uh, 49 hectares of deforestation. Yeah. You know, you have to cut, cut down, down forest for to grow food. Mm -hmm. Now, if, instead of cutting down 50 hectares of forest, you just cut down one. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that. Secondly, water savings. You only need less than you need less than 20 percent of the amount of water you need for open field growing mm -hmm. to grow hydroponically. Mm -hmm. Number three, you can grow all year round. It means you can extend the season. Number four. The, the quality of what you grow hydroponically is, is better. 95% grade one is fresh, you understand? Not like what you see in the open field. 50% of what is grown in the open field does not even fall under the grade one. You, you get what I'm trying to say. Number five, growing hydroponically means you can grow closer to the market. Look at tomato. Uh, most tomatoes grown in Nigeria, or the largest tomato market in Nigeria is my 12 in Lagos. 80% of the tomatoes that are sold in my 12 comes from about 500 to 1,000 plus kilometers away. You understand what I'm saying? 
Now with hydroponics, you can grow commercial quantity tomato close to Lagos, close to Lagos like yeah. we are doing here in Ogun State. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So uh, proximity to fork it is one of the things. Then post others lost. Fifty percent of the vegetables produced in Nigeria does not get to fork. Oh. Yes, they they become rotten along uh, the transport. Line. Transportation. But what are the major challenges you are facing in this you know this type of farming system? Challenges are ah, plenty. <laughs> but um, let me say the challenges. Number one, it's in terms of okay setup. Okay. You see. Um, Thank God you use the word challenges, not problems, or not disadvantages. Okay. Challenges can be mitigated. The cost of setup is high, mm. yes. But um, it's also a cost that you get your return on investment mm -hmm. in a short period of time. When I say short period of time, I'm talking about five to six seasons. That's about two to three years. And you have made your turnover. So. I still don't really see it as a, uh, as a problem, it's a challenge. Right. You know, cost of setup, then technical know-how. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a new type of farming. Quite a lot of people don't know how to. We, we graduate a lot of agronomists. Wow. But they are only agronomists by mouth. <laughs> they don't know anything, especially mm -hmm. in terms of greenhouse production. You understand? So all our staff, we, we have to retrain them. So as we are setting up farms, we need to be training more arms who can run these farms. Okay. We need to train people who can run irrigation, people who knows how to do trellising, okay. pruning, you know. A so a done. lot of work to be done. So in the area of training, those are challenges. We are just training those that knows how to run this system and things like that. So those are the major uh, challenges that I think we are seeing. And then getting the right size of land in the urban centers, you know, because we keep advising or advocating the fact that Hydroponics is a type of urban farming, so mm -hmm. that you don't have to travel far, um, you know, you mm -hmm. can be close to your farm and all that. So those are the challenges that I think are uh, currently mm -hmm. facing. Okay. So like, how many workers do you have? Of course, I know currently we, we are in one of your farms. I know yeah. you have other farms. So how many workers do you have that, you know, help you? Okay, uh, let me say full-time at BIC, about 21. Wow. And uh, But mm -hmm. sometimes, the way we work, we, we may carry up to 1,500 staff. Uh, for example, when we are doing installation, okay. we, we outsource it. So okay. we, we don't keep the workers fully. We have trained some of uh, our partners okay. to focus on certain work. So sometimes when we are on site, we may have 50 people doing installation per time. Per yes, time. At, but it's not a permanent thing. So they may be working for just like three to four months. When they are done, we allow them to go and do some other things. So that's how our staffing has been in the area of work. But we have about 21 permanent staff that work with us. Yeah. So, like, majorly, I open this, is it that it's, it's meant for a specific type, type of crop or it can be used to grow all type of crop? Hydroponics can grow any type of crop, including oh. palm tree. Wow. Cocoa, plantain. So, it's not the question of possibility. It's the question of viability. What crop is viable? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That to be, to be grown mm -hmm. if you want to. So, we advise... I value vegetables, specifically bell peppers of different colors, tomatoes, uh, lettuce, kale, vegetables that command good pricing. So those are the type, and they are not easily cultivated in the open field. Mostly in Nigeria, they import these vegetables in here. So those are the major type of vegetables that we focus uh, our attention. What's your advice to youth out there who want to go into this type of farming, this hydroponics? What should they expect, you know? I will advise that um, you shorten your learning curve, get mentoring, learn. Uh, the mistakes that we have made, you don't have to make those mistakes again. Uh, somebody said, if, if I'm where I am today, it's only because I'm standing on the shoulders of those who have gone ahead of me. So take advantage of trainings that organizations like BIC are, you know, churning out so that you can uh, scale fast, um, be part of different programs that are coming out you, you will learn from where we have got into. You won't have to start all over again. So I would say take advantage of training. Um, be humble. Have a good attitude. Attitudinal issue is the biggest challenge we have with our youth. And I would say have a good attitude. When you are learning, know that you are learning. Life is in phases. 
I mean, like in service. Like it's the time to learn. Yeah. You see, you must first learn, then you can earn. It's, it, it's not the other way around. So learning is important. I was an apprentice. You understand? After I graduated, to learn. learn. And yeah. it helped me to scale. Once you have learned, then you can start earning because yeah. your skill. Nobody can take your skill from you. It's yours forever. So that's the advice I would give to young people. Have a good attitude. Learn when you're supposed to learn. Be be dependable. You know, be dependable. See, if they cannot see you, they cannot favor you. Uh, somebody must be there in the palace to mention your name when the king is asking. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes. So be dependable. The person you are working with today may, may be somebody who can help you get somewhere tomorrow. Don't bomb bridges. So young people, that's the kind of advice I would give. Learn, be dependable, be trustworthy. Let it be said, oh, I can trust that person. that person. Because one thing we have lost in Nigeria is trust. It's now difficult to recommend someone. Yeah. Say, ah, I don't want him to go and embarrass me, mm -hmm. you know. So let's be dependable, let's be trustworthy, and you'll be amazed at how far we can go in life. Yeah. yeah. So, sir, thank you so much for the opportunity today. Yeah. So. Okay, maybe I should say... Um, 60% of our students okay. and people who probably did not study agriculture oh. like me yeah. <laughs> you understand yeah. but they have passion for it okay. so passion is the key to learning um, there's nothing you cannot learn that's the truth you you just need to be passionate when you are passionate you give yourself you know to the motivating the, uh, yeah. the ethics the the deep part and yeah you come out of it so i would say we most of the people that we actually trained did not even study agriculture in, in the first degree so like how many people uh, have you trained sir uh okay we've not done our total evaluation this year 2022 okay. but till 2021 we have trained about twenty thousand people Twenty thousand. Yeah. that's a lot yeah. that's so good that's sure good. Uh, we've done quite well done, sir. Yeah, thank you well done sir well done sir yeah. so I know I, I know you're a millionaire in this other things you so like when was when was the first million you made in this other things sir okay uh, uh, you know we are in Nigeria now yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> we should be careful about how we talk about millions anyway um, because I also encourage people that okay. family can make you millionaire um since it's in hydroponics, have you? Yeah, in hydroponics, yeah. Okay, I think I probably made my first million in hydroponics sometimes in 2017. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now 2017. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, like I told you, I started 2013. That's hydroponics. Yes. But I've been in the industry for about 17 years. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I only moved into hydroponics in 2013. Land you know, evolved. I think by 2017, we started doing fine. And, um, yeah, so. So if you want to know more about hydroponics and green fa greenhouse farming, so I'll be putting the website, their website in the description and the their YouTube channel so you can learn more. So do reach out to them if you have anything you want to consult them about hydroponics. So, is this also hydroponics, sir? Yeah, aquaponics. Aquaponics, okay. Just water, no soil, no, no, this is no mix. One of the pure hydroponics, like I said. Okay. Are we? Are, are we on? <laughs> so, like, you see, we grow fish here. Yeah? Fish. Wow. No, no, breed not the normal. These are ornamental fish. Okay. So the waste of those fish are responsible for the growth of the vegetable. Wow, wow. It's called aquaponics. It's a combination of aquaculture and hydroponics. So the waste air uh, is being recycled into nutrients for these veggies. And that's what we have here. Um, this is a bag irrigation system of hydroponics. Also here, we have bell peppers. Uh, you observe we do more bell peppers. So we have bell peppers. Bell peppers. You know.
They're everywhere here. We have bell peppers and we do more bell peppers because bell peppers are more valuable than most other vegetables. Okay. We have yeah, we have a lot of customers for that. Okay, yeah. okay. So the system here is called trough system. And um you can see in the trough we still have sockets. But here now we are now growing what is called uh kale. And this is actually called Collie kale. Okay. Collie kale is a very rich vegetable. Mm. I mean, very rich vegetable. Very, very rich. Uh, if you can eat it daily, eat it daily. You know, if if you eat this daily, it uh, it keeps the doctors away. That's the truth. So that's what we have. And we are transplanting more kale. More, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then these are called spinach. Malaga spinach. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. So, to the next video, adios.